in the footsteps of Abraham. Hi everyone, welcome to the program In the Footsteps of Abraham. We are here together tonight on day five. And tonight we'll be talking about the topic Abraham and his nephew Lot. There was a huge difference between the two. Both of them left Haran, but not both of them arrived in Canaan, the land of promise. Now, before we continue, please use the comment section here in Facebook. Submit your family names. We'll be including them at the end of the program in the sanctuary. And also be sociable and friendly. Share the link with your family and friends. When you give, you will receive. This is In the Footsteps of Abraham. We'll be back after the testimonial. Stay with us. Wala akong pinag-aralan. Ang pinakauna kong trabaho ay tagahugas ng pinggan sa restaurant. At may mga pagkakataon na wala na kaming makain. Ako si Stanislaw. May sariling negosyo at 49 anyos. Pangarap ko na magkaroon ng maayos na pamumuhay. Kaso wala akong pinag-aralan. Grade 4 lang yung natapos ko. At yung pagdurusa ko nagsimula nung bata pa lang ako. Kasi masasabi na yung buhay namin, meron kaming lahat, pero nawawala. Nauubos kasi may bisyo yung tatay ko. Lagi siyang nagsusugal. At nung ako ay 14 anyos, meron pa akong batang kapatid. Kaming dalawa, na adik na rin sa sugal, na adik na rin sa inom, nakapag-asawa ako at nakahanap ng katuwang sa buhay. At pagkatapos nun, doon na dumating yung mga pagdurusa. Nagkaroon kami ng anak. Bata akong naging ama. 17 anyos pa lang ako may anak na ako. At ako na bata, kailangan kong alagaan ang aking pamilya. Doon na kami naghirap. Kaya ang ginawa ko, naghanap na agad ako ng trabaho para masustentuhan ko lang ang aking pamilya. At narinig ko yung patungkol sa lugar sa Sao Paulo. Kasi sabi nila, pag lumipat daw doon, gaganda yung buhay mo. Lumipat nga kami doon at tumira kami sa napakaliit na bahay kasama yung asawa ko at ang aking mga anak. At doon na nagsimula na ang dami naming kulang. Dumating yung napakahirap na panahon na walang-wala na kaming pera. Walang-wala na kami na kung saan mismo pambili ng gatas ng anak. Wala na kaming pambili. Minsan pumunta ako sa bakery para bumili ng tinapay at gatas pero wala talaga kaming pera kaya hindi nila ako binigyan. Ako yung taong wasak. Wala nang mararating sa buhay. At doon na dumating yung depression umiinom na rin ako ng mga gamot para makatulog lang. Sa loob ng anim na taon, umiinom ako ng gamot para lang talaga makatulog ng mahimbing. Kahit na may asawa na ako, meron pa rin nangyayaring lukuhan. Namumuhay ako na para bang wala pa akong asawa. Pumupunta ako sa mga parties. Naalala ko pa dahil nga nagtatrabaho ako ng gabi. Sugal lang ako ng sugal na minsan din ako umuwi ng bahay kasi... Dumediretso na ako sa bahay ng babae ko. Trabaho ako ng trabaho at lahat ng kinikita ko, pinangsusugal ko. At isang araw, pumunta ako sa isang plaza. Kasama ko noon yung anak ko, pati na rin yung asawa ko. May nagbigay sa amin ng isang dyaryo. Yung dyaryo na yon galing sa isang simbahan. Yung simbahan nga ng Universal. Tinanggap yun ng asawa ko at nagustuhan niya. Kasi meron naman siyang alam patungkol sa Biblia. Tapos sinabi niya yung patungkol sa Simbahang Universal at inimbitahan kami na pumunta ng biyernes. Sabi nila na yun daw ay pintuan para makalabas kami sa aming mga problema. At pumunta nga kami doon at merong kapayapaan sa loob ko. Nagsasalita yung pastor noon. Sabi niya na kung ako daw ay susunod, matutupad daw kung ano yung nakasulat sa Biblia. Pa na yun ay nakasulat sa libro ng Deuteronomio chapter 28. Nakasulat doon yung mga pagpapala na matatanggap ng mga taong masunurin sa kanya. At ang pinakauna kong ginawa nung panahon na yun ay maging tapat sa pagbabalik ng aking ikapu. At doon ako nagsimulang matuto ang dami kong natutunan. Una sa lahat, kinakailangan kong bitawan. Bitawan lahat ng ginagawa kong mali. Halimbawa na lang yung pagpunta sa mga parties. Iniwanan ko lahat ng yun. Iniwan ko rin yung bisyo ko sa pagsusugal. Binitawan ko, iniwan ko yun kahit na yun yung pinakagusto ko. 
Meron rin akong mga sama ng loob, pero binitawan ko lahat ng yun. Binitawan ko, iniwan ko rin lahat ng pag-aalala. At nung iniwan ko at binitawan ko itong lumang pamumuhay ko sa altar, naintindihan ko na ang dapat kong iprioridad sa aking buhay ay ang matanggap ng Espiritu Santo. At doon na ako nagsimulang hanapin siya. Sa mga services ng linggo, talagang inihahanda ko ang aking sarili. At nagkaroon nga ako ng karanasan sa Diyos. At isang araw, nandun ako sa bahay, hinahanap ko siya. At tumanggap ako ng isang saya na hindi ko kayang maipaliwanag. Ang saya-saya ko noon na gusto kong ipagsabi ang patungkol sa Espiritu Santo sa lahat. At nung natanggap ko yung Espiritu Santo, ginawa ako nitong isang pagpapala. Ako mismo ang pagpapala. At sumali ako sa campaign of Israel. Nagsakripisyo ako. Lahat ng meron ako. Ginawa ko lahat. Binigay ko lahat ng sweldo ko. Pagkatapos ng sakripisyong iyon, nagpalit ako ng trabaho. Kasi nga, tagahugas lang ako ng pinggan. So, nagsimula akong gumawa ng mga merienda. Kasi gusto kong maging isang pagpapala. At pagkatapos nun, naging isa akong manager. Ibig sabihin, ako na yung namamahala sa mga nagluluto. Ako yung namamahala sa kusina. Ako yung namamahala sa lahat. Isang malaking pagpapala yun sa akin. At dahil doon, nag-ipon ako at nakabila ako ng aking sasakyan. At dumating muli yung panibagong campaign at hiningi sa akin ng Diyos yung sasakyan na yun. At kailangan ko rin bitawan yung sasakyan na yun. At pagkatapos ng sakripisyong iyon, binigyan ako ng inspirasyon ng Espiritu Santo. Kahit na wala akong kaalam-alam tungkol sa mga isda, kahit na magprito, pero ang Espiritu Santo ang nagbibigay sa atin ng kakayahan. Siya yung nagdadala ng mga ideas na gustuhan ko yun at pinagtrabahuhan ko, pinag-aralan ko at natutunan ko kung paano gumawa ng mga Japanese food. Nagtayo ako ng una kong restaurant at yung mga nandoon ay mga Japanese food lang. At yung Espiritu Santo patuloy na nagbibigay ng mga idea at dahil doon, palago kami ng palago. Ngayon, Nakapagpatayo na ako ng pangalawa, pangatlo, pangapat na restaurant. Puro tagumpay lang. Ngayon nakabili na ako ng sarili kong bahay. Isang bahay na mayroong tatlong palapag. Talagang napakaganda ng pagkakagawa. At nakabili pa ako ng iba pang mga bahay. Mga bahay na pinapaupahan ko. At yung pinento kong anak ko na talagang hirap na hirap kami ngayon. Meron na rin siyang pamilya. Nakatira sila sa ibang bansa ngayon. Ako yung naglalakad nga lang dati, pero ngayon meron na akong sariling sasakyan. May sarili akong sasakyan, pero meron ring sariling sasakyan yung asawa ko. Meron rin akong sasakyan na pang negosyo lamang. Isa na akong pagpapala para sa aking asawa, para rin sa aking mga anak. Pero ang pinakamahalaga sa lahat, ang aking kayamanan, ay ang Espiritu Santo. Siya yung nagbibigay ng lakas, ng kakayahan. Kasi araw-araw, sa pagising ko, siya yung gumagabay sa akin. May mga problema. Minsan, may mga sitwasyon na napakatindi. Pero ang pinakamaganda, yung Diyos kasama ko at tinutulungan ako. Kaya hindi ako nahihirapan na ibigay kung anong hingiin niya. Kasi lahat ng nangyayari sa aking buhay, kasi siya ang may gawin. In the Footsteps of Abraham Welcome back to In the Footsteps of Abraham. You're joining us on a special journey. And the Campaign of Israel is a biannual event. We hold it in the church in the summer and in the winter. And this year we are focusing on the Bible hero called Abraham. The Bible says, look to Abraham. That means copy Abraham, imitate Abraham. And we draw inspiration from his life, his obedience in the Word of God. We believe if we do what the people in the Bible did in the past, the God of the past, he will bring the miracles of the past to the present. He wants your life, our life to reflect the image of God. Today's topic is about Abraham and his nephew Lot. Both of them left Haran. 
Haran was a place of idolatry. It symbolizes the old life, the old mentality, the land of addiction, the land of sickness, the land of unhappiness, divorce, separation, depression, anything that symbolizes negativity or a life that is stuck, they left it behind with divine direction of the voice of God in search, in movement to a better life, a great life, the promised land, the land of Canaan, which is the land of Israel. There's a big difference between those two personalities. Abraham followed the voice of God, but Lot, who was also on the way, he never had communion with God, wasn't directed by the voice of God. He followed the voice of his heart and emotion. And both were very different people. Abraham married a woman of God. Lot married an unbeliever. Abraham was prosperous, but Lot, he lost his wealth, got robbed, got kidnapped. His life was a complete disaster. His children committed incest with the father. And all in all, we saw that his wife died premature and his life was a chaos because he wasn't walking in obedience to the instruction of God. Abraham, on the other hand, if God would speak, he would move. If God would not speak, he would wait for the voice of God. And this is the key in the campaign of Israel. You must be in tune with the voice of God and not only knowing the voice of God, having courage and obedience to practice and obey this voice, follow this voice. I'm here together with Pastor Robert and Pastor Vincent. Let's explore and touch on this topic, Pastor Robert. Good evening, Bishop Ailey. Good evening, Pastor Vincent and all the viewers. Maybe the person, Bishop, is, is asking, but how can I know, you know, how can I identify the voice of God? How can God talk to me, speak to me? God will not speak by emotion. God will not speak by feeling. Like Lot, you see Lot, the, the Bible says, he's the one who lifted up his eyes. God did not ask anything. Abraham did not tell him anything or look right side, left side, his heart, his emotion. And we know, as you mentioned, how Lot in, in his, his life, end up his life. And this person is, is asking, how can, I, how can I know that God is talking to me? How can I find out, you know, the voice of God? When you read the Bible, you are watching this program, mm -hmm. the testimonies, you come to the church, there will be a particular moment, Bishop, that God will reveal this person, and it's very clear, that's what He wants for this person. That's the direction. That's not the way God wants this person to participate in this campaign and follow His voice. Yes, for you to hear the voice of God, you have to be tuned in to the station of God. If you're in your living room, you've got the TV on, the radio station on, you've got your cell phone here, a lot of things happening, and you try to read the Bible, I doubt that you can understand the will of God. So be careful and be honest. Are you clearly tuned into the voice of God? Are you being guided by the voice of God? Or are you being guided by the voice of man? Or the voice of your heart? Or who knows? Being inspired by the voice of the devil, a spirit of deception. You know, Pastor Vincent, there was a day in your life when God spoke to you powerfully and strong, and you had a conviction. Share more about that, please. Yes, good evening, Bishop Valen, Bishop uh, Pastor Robert, all the viewers. Uh, last year, uh, I was here in Hong Kong, most specifically there in Central, and there was a hardship that my wife and I, we were facing because my wife were not really careful with her health and she had herniated discs. That was a terrible pain in the lumbar uh, region of the spine cord. And to the point, she was using clutches to walk. She could not walk properly and the pain was unbearable. When I left the U.S., I was doing the work there, the work of God there. And as the year finishes, we received a tax refund from the government. And was 
saving that money in order to go and visit the Temple of Solomon in Brazil. We never been there before. Mm -hmm. And I told my wife, maybe we're gonna have a chance to visit the Temple of Solomon. That will be an opportunity for us also to visit our family members. But I was revolted because I was praying for people in the church, members of the church, newcomers got healed, many miracles happening, great testimonies, but my wife was sick. And I said, what good is it to have a, a trip to Brazil, even to go to the Temple of Solomon and visit my family members, if my wife cannot even walk properly? So the pain she was feeling was affecting me. And that pain caused us to be revolted. And God said to us in a clear way, if you want to see my glory, you have to do what you preach. You have to go to the altar and obey my voice. Be a child of Abraham. We were in Japan and she went there in order to have treatment. That was when decided, I don't care about any trip that we may have. The future belongs to God. What we need to do now is to go to the altar and sacrifice. So in the last campaign of Israel, uh, we sacrificed almost 4,000 US dollars. That was the total amount of money we were saving to visit our family members. So we passed through the altar, we left all, and we left the altar with nothing we were zero. We were depending on God. And we could see the power of God that can make the weak strong, that can make the sick a healthy person coming to the body of my wife. Her recovery was very fast. And now we came back to Hong Kong again. We are serving God. She's active. She is healthy. No more pain. So what these viewers, Bishop, have to understand that we, on the altar, we are the sacrifice. We are Isaac. We are, you know, with our lives upon the altar 24 hours a day. We don't have our personal dreams or goals. We live to do God's will. And when we pass this spirit to the members of the church, they have to understand that we are not hypocrites. We are the sacrifice. And what we are telling these people to do during this campaign of Israel, we have experienced. We pastors, we are not professional preachers. We are the sacrifice. And if the viewers of this program, they follow the footsteps of Abraham, they will be the next one that will give their testimonies, Bishop. Yeah, if you are watching the program today, this is in the footsteps of Abraham. And we're talking about imitate and do what Abraham did and you will become a child of Abraham. You just heard here a true life story only happened in the last campaign. Now it's the big question here is are you Lot or are you Abraham? We have here the campaign envelope that you will be able to get on the altar of the UCKG Help Center. Either in Hong Kong Island or Kowloon or anywhere else around the globe. The key is this, one thing is for you to hear the voice of God, another thing is for you to obey it. In your case, Pastor Vincent, you opened your hands not to travel to the Temple of Solomon, but on the other hand, God gave you something much greater. And you know that when one family member is hurt, the whole family is in pain. Now if you want to change your situation, then you need to do your part and God will do his part. We're going to go for a short break. And then we'll be back on the altar in the sanctuary of the church. Stay with us. This is in the footsteps of Abraham. What is the campaign of Israel? It's a challenge of faith based upon the word of God. An occasion where many prayer requests are taken to the Holy Land and showed us great power in the past. The objective of this great campaign is to awaken people's faith. When a person's faith is awakened and it's put into practice, through that faith, they will see a miracle in their life. 
Regardless of skin color, race, education, religion, social status, or physical appearance, who then should participate of this campaign? The answer is anyone who wants to see a total transformation in their lives. Campaign of Israel at the Gate of Heron. In the footsteps of Abraham. Welcome back to In the Footsteps of Abraham. You find us here inside of the sanctuary, right on the altar. This is where the journey begins. This is the banner on the background. It says, leave, go out from your land. God wants you to have a great life, but for you to go into a new life, you need to leave behind the place where you are, the situation where you are. That requires faith and action. And the campaign of Israel is a moment of action, 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 and action, and little prayer. Tonight, we're going to lift up your family names in prayer. Please lift up your hands and close your eyes, elevate your thoughts to God. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I lift up every name that has been submitted in the comment section. Children, parents, siblings, spouses, husbands and wives, wherever they need healing, wherever they need freedom of addiction, wherever there's a family member in a hospital, in a detention center, there, my Lord, in a prison cell, in trouble with the law, the police. My Lord, we speak over them the healing of God, the deliverance of God, the freedom of God. Receive the restoration in your family. And your children are being delivered from any kind of abuse, any kind of bullying. My Father, move your hand in the direction of this marriage as well to bring restoration, reconciliation, and forgiveness. We speak the blessing as well upon their work, their career, their education, their business, that it may prosper and multiply. My Father, protect this family. And above all, my Lord, bring them, my Lord, to the altar. Bring this family into the kingdom of God, giving them salvation, giving them peace, giving them unity. My Lord, every name that we lift up to you, let them be written in the book of life in the name of Jesus Christ. Because, my Lord, on the altar, the vision of those who sacrifice is opened for the great things that you have prepared for them. They will not longer be like Lot with a human vision. Once their vision is expanded, they will dream big and they will have courage and boldness to go forward in order to make their dreams come true. Give strength to the people that have left Haran, but they are still halfway. They will reach Canaan. They will reach the altar of the sacrifice in order to receive the fire of God that will make them strong, able to do whatever they had in their mind. They will accomplish everything successfully because the Holy Spirit will be with them. They will be one with the Holy Spirit. This is what sacrifice makes in our lives. We become one with God on the altar and nothing shall be impossible for us. So visit all the viewers, the ones who are participating in this campaign of Israel in the faith of Abraham. We want them to have extraordinary results in testimonies and Lord be with them during the whole journey that they may finish it in order to say I overcame because I am a child of Abraham in the name of Jesus we bless everyone now in Jesus name amen my father I agree with your servant and we determine my father that the envelope that they have in their hands right now that are praying for the prayer request they have written, my Lord, right now in their hands 
has become my father, their Isaac. In Jesus' name, amen. Very well. So this is the prayer that God has chosen from you, from the altar, into your life. And you have here the envelope of the campaign, and we have as well here the prayer request. You can get it here on the altar in Kowloon or Hong Kong Island. It is yours. But as you come and get it, also remember, there is a journey that you have to take. Now, the journey that we're going to take, God will be guiding you with that. And then you return on the altar to fulfill your vow on or before July 14. It's up to you. And then in Israel, bishops will be there. They will be praying at the same gate, the same place where Abraham heard the voice of God for the first time in his life. This is in the footsteps of Abraham. We'll be back on Monday with our program, 10 p.m. God bless you abundantly. From Beersheba he set out one day To Mount Moriah he trod Deep in thought as a boy Walked silent beside A mystery he kept in his heart As the others just followed his path Knowing the man who they looked to was bonded to God. The day came to a close. They rested to gather their strength. With morning the sun called them on to continue their quest. Old Abraham, fearless and brave, knew God was greater than great walk boldly onward to prove the depth of his faith three days journey had passed when finally they arrived at the place where his faith would be challenged tested and tried his servants waited behind The child and he walked alone Making it clear that the two Would return later on Isaac walked on in front A beautiful boy to behold Maybe then was when Abraham's tears Had started to Roll. Isaac asked, Father, where is the lamb? The one for the burnt sacrifice. My son, the sacrifice lamb, God will provide. He'll provide. He'll provide. My son, the sacrifice lamb, God will provide. He'll provide. He'll provide. My son, the sacrifice lamb, God will provide. With care and respect he prepared. An altar to God on that day Placing the wood and the kindling To set it ablaze He picked up his child bound with cords Laid him on to the altar to slay A sharpened knife in his hand He raised over his boy Abraham stood firm in his faith God's plan he refused to deny 
ready to do any task his God had required. The angel cried out, Abraham, don't lay your hand on the boy, for now I know you fear God, you are blessed evermore. He'll provide, He'll provide, my son sacrifice lamb God will provide he'll provide he'll provide my son the sacrifice lamb God will provide he'll provide he'll provide my son, the sacrifice lamb, God will provide. He'll provide. He'll provide. My son, the sacrifice lamb, God will provide. Be sure the victory is yours. God will provide Be sure the victory is yours God will provide